थैंक यू Thank you Father In Jesus mighty name we have worshiped We give you all the glory We give you honor We give you all the glory We give you honor Jesus we give you Father, thank you. Ancient of days, thank you. The Father of all fathers, thank you. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for July. Thank you for August. Thank you for September. Thank you for October. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus name. Thank you for our elders. Thank you for the youth. Thank you for the young adults. Thank you for the teenagers. Thank you for the children. Thank you for everything. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus name. Tonight the only way you can do it give every one of us dominion. Before we leave here in the morning, my father and my God Let there be evidence that you have given us dominion. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And let someone shout hallelujah. And shake hands with one or two people and say God we bless you mightily tonight. And then you may please be seated except those who are born in the month of October. If you are born in October, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Father, I commit your children born in the month of October into your hands. October the 10th month of the year. And 10 is the number of double grace. 
I commit all these your children into your hands. And for each of them, I've asked from the bottom of my heart that you will give them double blessings. Double promotions. Double anointing. Double miracles. Mighty testimonies. And today, especially, give them dominion. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Those of you born in the month of October, shout hallelujah. All right. Ah. We want to really, really thank God for our children who had ministered to us tonight. They are getting better and better day by day. We are now very, very close to that time when they will come they will minister like this and all I will do will be just come and give you the Father's blessing and be on our way home. Tonight has been especially very, very good. Very, very good. The South South Zone, the choir was a very good choir and the preacher proved to be a very good teacher. Uh, I don't want to go over everything he said because of time, but he talked to us about dominion being a position, and then dominion being a reality. He made it clear to us that um, you can be born into a position of dominion. If you are born in the palace of a king, you automatically, I mean, if you are a child of the king, of course, uh, you are either a prince or a princess. And things are different, even though you are a child, because if they want to take the child of the president to school, uh, the child will have some bodyguards, people driving in front, people driving behind. And so you enjoy some blessings because of your position into which you are born. And you don't do anything to get born into that position. It's just a work of grace. And then he moved on to talk to us about dominion as a reality and explain that one to us that uh, here you have some work to do. The son has to learn while he's growing. I mean, the child has to learn while he's growing to become a son. And then he, he made one very serious statement that I hope you will take note of. He said, gravity is against jumping, but it's not against growth. That's very, very important. Uh, so those of us who are thinking that uh, we can have dominion by Yahoo Yahoo, you are deceiving yourself. Gravity we see to you try to jump, it will bring you down. But when it comes to growth, there is no hindrance at all. He said a lot of beautiful things, like I said, we, we, we haven't got the time. He talks about uh, you must be born again, 
you must have consciousness of dominion, you must understand covenant and the practice of it. He talked about covenant of peace, covenant of protection, covenant of prosperity, etc., etc., etc. Fantastic job. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for that our brother. I think I will jump zone two and take a look at uh, <laughs> let me take a look at zone three fantastic choir that choir was great and the preacher also great uh, he told us that in the beginning God introduced us to himself, his nature, his character, his authority and then he introduced us to man. He reminded us that the word dominion is a military word. You have dominion so you have the power to subdue to compel others to do your will. He's made a very important statement that uh, popularity is not the same thing as impact. You can be popular for nothing. Nobody ha can feel your impact. He spoke about operating dominion, that uh, you have to be in contact with light, he talked about the salt, he talked about uh, discipline if you want to be uh, in dominion, and he spoke about hunger for the spirit of wisdom. Very beautiful teaching, very beautiful teaching. Praise the Lord. And then Zone 4, the choir was again very good, uh, and the preacher very great, talked about assurance, about instruction, about the fact that our dominion is here on earth, uh, that the Almighty God expects us to occupy here on earth, he gave us a mandate to take charge while here on earth and God is busy doing his own things in heaven and he has handed over the earth to us to do the same thing. He expected us to uh, run the earth even as he is running heaven. He spoke about the need for us to submit to God's authority that we must understand what God's will is if we really want to exercise dominion and uh, to understand the will of God we have to study the word of God. He emphasized that our prayer must be fervent because uh, the more you pray the more power you generate. It's made it clear that dominion is not for the lazy and um, and from there on he practically jumped into my sermon so I'm not going to repeat what he said so that uh, I will be able to say something <laughs> beautiful beautiful teaching beautiful teaching very wonderful and then I come back to zone 2 I've said it before that maybe we need to rearrange these zones. There is something about this, our brothers from the north. Oh God Almighty. Each time they come, they come with there's an extra special fire that they, they bring down to us here. The choir absolutely great. 
The preacher just absolutely wonderful. Um, and by the way, maybe I need to tell my son from the north, that word is dominion. Not domu. <laughs> it is <laughs> do me neon <laughs> and I'm telling you that this young man just blazed a trail after listening after listening to his sermon if uh, if it were allowed i would simply have said let's just pray on what this young man has said and close the service beautiful he said you must recognize your identity you must know that you are made to rule and reign you must have a lifestyle of prayer. He says something very, very instructive. That in the place of prayer, you gain foresight as well as insight. He mentioned living a lifetime based on the word of God. And then he says something that I hope everybody will pay attention to. That you must live a lifestyle of service. When he said that, I said, I see. I hope we could give him a little more time to explain. Do you know that when you see the roadside mechanic, dressed in his dirty aprons. You may look down on him, but when your car has trouble, you will know that that man with his dirty clothes can decide how long you are going to wait. That that man who can exercise, who can who can offer a special service is usually the man who's in control. <laughs> They've dealt with me before, and so I know what I'm talking about. They can just say, let's check the engine, and in the process, they, they remove a plug without you knowing. And if you don't know how to behave yourself, they can keep you for hours. Why pretending that they are busy working? Why are doctors so special? Medical doctors. It's because when you are really in trouble, they are the people who come to offer service. service. A lifestyle of service. We always put you in control. I hope that every one of us will learn to begin to serve. And then, of course, he said one or two other things that I said, I better not tell you because uh, by the time these children finish speaking, they have finished all my sermons. So I don't even know whether I should be bothering you any longer. <laughs> Because they have already done an extremely wonderful job. I think we should really, really thank God for these wonderful children. Two major points of correction. Number one. I know when you get here and the Spirit of God is upon you, there's a tendency for you to move fast. 
of course because we have limited time but I've said it before as you are preaching somebody is somewhere interpreting if you move too fast the interpreter cannot cope and there be a large section of this crowd that would not be able to follow your sermon so no matter how strong the anointing may be on you always remember that someone is somewhere interpreting so if you can as much as possible reduce your speed to be almost like my own i know there's the youthful energy uh, it will be good so that because when 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 we are talking about communication you have communicated very well when everybody you want to hear you have heard you communication falls flat when the people you are talking to are not all following what you are saying take note of that correction is very important correction number two your time is limited so don't which one is that <laughs> somebody is interpreting in uh, a strange language over there god have mercy I know the engineers will ah okay <laughs> the engineers i was wondering where is the, that interpreter the second thing is you don't need to waste the little time you have thanking daddy Gio, thanking mommy Gio for allowing you to come to this exalted altar <laughs> <laughs> don't worry yourself next time just go ahead okay <laughs> let somebody shout hallelujah November Holy Ghost service by the grace of God is going to be entitled winds of change And then, of course, you know that will be the last Holy Ghost service of the year because by December we have the Congress. And the Congress is from December 10 to 15. December 10 to 15, the theme is Onward Christian Soldiers. And because we have the Congress in December, I'm sure you will know that all workers must be at the November Holy Ghost service so that we can discuss our preparations for December. Now, I know the... Um, Pastor Seed family will be wondering, Daddy hasn't said anything about our representative. <laughs> I don't want to say much, but by the grace of God, it looks as if that boy is getting better every day. Uh, you have a very good rep representative, and each time he comes on stage, even myself, his biological father, I learned something new. So let's give the Lord a big round of applause for the Pastor Seed family. The text that everybody read is the one I'm going to read. 
<laughs> I will try my best not to take too much of time of your time because we have quite a few things we still want to do tonight. Uh, this afternoon while I was praying in, in, in my prayer room, the Almighty God laid it upon my heart that we should lay hands on all the youth. Um, so when at least two of the speakers came talking about mantu uh, floating in the air, uh, mantu that will be deposited, etc., etc., and another one came and talked about Coronation Day. I think uh, they are walking in the spirit. Uh, the senior pastors here will be laying hands on you, and uh, if I were you, I would get ready. Because if you are not thirsty, they will just lay hands on you and nothing will happen. Uh, but if you are really, really hungry for dominion, when those hands touch your head this night, things will never be the same again. Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to read only verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. There's this thing called the law of priority. Law of priority means that whatever is uppermost in your heart is what you are likely to speak first. Because according to Luke chapter 6 verse 45, Luke 6 verse 45, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The first time God spoke to man, he said the following. Number one, be blessed. And so I'm repeating on behalf of my Father in heaven to everyone who is a youth. And uh, you are a youth if you are less than a hundred years old. To everyone who say youth, listen to me right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, be blessed. Yeah. Now be blessed. It's a very serious business, as I've already told you before. I will just remind you very quickly what that carries. If you read Genesis 27 from verse 22 to 33, Genesis 27, 22 to 33, be blessed really means let all the forces in the heavens, all the forces on the earth, all the forces underneath the earth cooperate for your success. So when God says be blessed, that means you must succeed at all costs. When you go through the scriptures, you will see a situation where, for example, the heavens cooperated with Joshua. In Joshua chapter 10, from verse 12 to 14, Joshua 10, 12 to 14, Joshua was fighting a battle and the sun was about to set, and he commanded the sun to stand still, and the sun stood still. 
I want to assure you that the Almighty God can cause the things in the atmosphere to cooperate with you to succeed. I'm tempted to tell you a story which some of you probably had long, long time ago when most of the camp was bush. And I was going for a walk in the bush, the bush path. And I took with me my torchlight. And the battery was this rechargeable battery. You know, you charge it and then you use it when it runs out or you, you recharge. The battery was rechargeable, so when I left home, the light of the torchlight was bright. And when I got far into the jungle, and one of these days, I will show the place to someone. It's no longer bush now, it's, it's in the town. Suddenly, the battery ran out of power, and the, the torchlight went out. And I was far in the bush. Everything became absolutely black. How do I get back? Because the bush paths were very narrow. And then I remember once my teacher taught me when in the primary school that if light goes out suddenly and everything became dark, if you close your eyes for about two minutes, by the time you open your eyes, your eyes would have adjusted a little to the darkness, and you'll be, begin to, you'll be able to see lightly. So I closed my eyes. And of course, I was praying. It was a prayer walk. After two minutes, I opened my eyes. And right there in the heavens, was a big moon and everywhere became light well Lord thank you I didn't see this moon when the light went out but uh, well thank you so I came back to where there was light as soon as I came to where there was light, it just occurred to me, there was no moon at this time of the month. So I looked up to see this big moon, and it was no longer there. I pray for someone here today, if the Almighty God has to send a moon, to lighten your darkness. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Be blessed means let all the things in the heavens cooperate with you to succeed. It means let everything on earth here cooperate with you to succeed. When you read Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1 to 16, Genesis 26 from verse 1 to 16, you will discover that in the time of famine, when everybody was in famine, the ground of Isaac produced abundantly. So abundantly that it became greater than a whole nation. And the king had to come to him and say, we don't know how you are doing your own. But go away from us. Because you are greater than us. Than us. I'm praying for every one of you here today. When others might be crying famine, you'll be crying surplus. Do you know when you read Daniel chapter 3 from verse 1 to the end, Daniel chapter 3 from verse 1 to the end, 
it was an idol worshipping king that created an idol and says Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and everybody must worship that idol or they be thrown into the fire at the end of the story it is this idol worshipping king that promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego the almighty God is so mighty that he can even use forces that are not uh, what we will call forces of heaven for your promotion. You see, the, the devil has to take permission from him before he can touch you. I'm sure you know the story of Job. And the Almighty God is the Lord of hosts. He controls all the hosts in heaven, on earth, underneath the earth. And when he says you are blessed, it means all these forces must come round and support you so that you will succeed. I was telling my children in the morning devotion some days ago, how God, the Almighty God, used a witch in our compound to speak something that I'm sure probably uh, led to the preservation of my life. You say, how come? Well, when I was younger, I don't know of nowadays, there are several ways that your enemy can kill you. One of the ways is that they put poison in your pan wine. So you drink it and you go. Another way is they give you cola nut that have been poisoned. You eat it and you die. And in those days, when I was in the secondary school, those of us who are from poor homes, we don't have money to buy coffee. And yet we want to study at night. And Kola North does the same thing as coffee would do. So I was always eating Kola North so that I could study at night. One day there was a witch in our company, a self-confessed witch, well known. He just looked at me and said, Dejare, stop eating cola nut. Of course, you know that was the last time I ate cola nut. <laughs> because I know she wasn't the one speaking, it was the Almighty God speaking through that witch. I pray in the name that's above every other name that every force that may want one way or the other to stand in your way will become stepping stone to your success. The first thing God said to man is, be blessed. And then he said, be fruitful. And he decreed that to be fruitful. That's why he said in Exodus 23, verse 26, Exodus 23, verse 26, that there be none barren among my people. And I say in the name that's above every other name, it doesn't matter how impossible it may appear now, none of you people will die barren. And like I told you before, barrenness is not just dealing with the fruit of the womb below. It means fruitless efforts. So when he said be fruitful, it means no more fruitless efforts. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 8, Deuteronomy 28 verse 8, the Almighty God made a promise that he will command his blessing upon all you do. That means you will no longer fail. And then he said not just be fruitful, he said multiply. And I think I've explained that one to us before. 
the difference between addition and multiplication. 10 plus 10 is going to give you 20, but 10 times 10 will give you 100. So multiply means increase very rapidly. And when you look at the fact that in Genesis chapter 46 from verse 26 to 27, Genesis 46 from verse 26 to 27, that the, the total number of Israelis that got to Egypt were 70 souls. But by the time we're talking about Exodus chapter 12 verse 37, Exodus 12 verse 37, the number of souls that left Egypt, according to that passage, is 600,000 men without counting children. That is called multiplication. So I have good news for somebody here tonight. Very soon. Your greatness will be so mighty that everybody will ask you how can this be but so i can go on explaining that genesis chapter 1 verse 28 and i've decided to take that little bit because these children have handled the almost every other thing. But you will find that of all the blessings that God pronounced on man, the first time he spoke to him, the one that he reserved to the end is have dominion. He says, above all that I've said, have dominion. Be in charge. And these children have told you that to have dominion physically means from now on you won't have to worry about sickness. Exodus 15 verse 26, they quoted it. You do what God asks you to do, Exodus 15 26. you will not need to be sick. It is possible that you don't know sickness until you die. You don't have to be sick to die. When you have lived all your days on earth, you can just go. I've told you how I will live when my time comes. If Jesus tarries, go on a Sunday, go to church, sing, dance, rejoice, and then come home, eat pandadiyam, and go. So that everybody will be saying, Ah, we saw him in the church this morning. And I'm praying for every one of you here. When your time to go comes, they will not be carrying you from hospital to hospital. <laughs> Mentally, you can have dominion. Because according to James chapter 1 verse 5, I mean, one of my children mentioned something along that line. The Almighty God says, if you want wisdom, ask him, ask God. He'll give it to you liberally, generously. The Almighty God can give you dominion mentally, academically. I've told you the story of a boy, the son of two professors, the father a professor, the mother a professor. But the boy was just dumb. In any class they put him, he will come last. 
Move him from a class of 25 people, put him in a class of 36 people, his position will change from 20 feet to 36. Then the parents brought him. We prayed a simple prayer. The next examination, he came first. The, the teachers said it is not possible. They said because they know that even if they gave him the answer to copy, he will copy it wrong. But the Almighty God has touched the boy. So they gave him another test and he scored higher. And so for those of you who are students listening to me today, the ability to dominate academically, receive it in Jesus' name. You can have dominion emotionally. In other words, for the rest of your life, you don't need to know sorrow. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Philippians 4, verse 4, the Bible says, Rejoice. Again, I say, Rejoice. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to explain to you the difference between daily bread and a feast. Daily bread, you eat something in the morning, something in the afternoon, or something in the evening. Well, at least in those days. <laughs> I think the majority of people now if you can get something in the morning, something in the evening, you praise God. That's daily bread. A feast is when something big is happening, marriage or something, and there's abundance of food. The Lord asked me to tell someone, praise me for your daily bread because your feast is approaching. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, Rejoice evermore. John 16, verse 24. John 16, verse 24 says, you can ask until your joy be full. You don't need to know sorrow again. You can dominate when it comes to emotional aspect of life. And I'm decreeing the name of my Father in heaven that there is someone here who will never weep again. <laughs> and just like one of my children mentioned, you can dominate materially. In turn, John verse 2, I mean, third John, the only chapter, verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health. It is the will of God above all things that you will prosper. The only thing I need to warn you about is that when you prosper, some people will be angry. You need to understand that. I understand that someone gave a bishop a car. And some people got very, very upset. And that how can a bishop be riding a Rolls Royce? <laughs> As if once you are a bishop, you must die of hunger. Let me tell you, my beloved children, If you die poor, they will blame you. They will say, after all these days of you serving God, this is how you earn. If you can't pay your rent, they will say, where is your God? If all of a sudden you begin to ride a Rolls Royce, they will attack you. 
Now, so which of the two do you choose? <laughs> they are going to attack you anyway. Whether you die of poverty or, <laughs> or you live in abundance. How many of you prefer to live in abundance? And I decree in the name that's above every other name, very soon your neighbors will envy you. And then, of course, you can have dominion spiritually. First John chapter 4, verse 4, as some of my children also mentioned. Oh, thank you, Father. I want to say amen to this before I tell you. Because the Almighty God asked me to tell someone that beginning from tonight, all lights have turned green for you. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, little children, you have overcome them. You have God. And so you, you are an overcomer by decree. He said, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That means it doesn't matter who and who are there in the world that do not want you to succeed. You have already overcome them. You know, it is possible to win without a fight. That's the meaning of more than conquerors. And the word of God. <laughs> Glory be to God. There must be something happening down there. The Bible says we are more than conquerors. From today onward, for the rest of your life, you will win without a fight. Because the greater one is inside of you. Now, the, the, my children, like I said, they preach almost everything I, w I want to preach. I'm just trying to put my own little thoughts together. And so, what are the characteristics of those who, who have dominion? How do we know them from those who are just pretending? Like somebody mentioned, the first characteristic that you want to notice is that they are wise people. People who have dominion are wise. Because Proverbs chapter 17 verse 2, Proverbs 17 verse 2, may declare, it is the wise that will rule the foolish. And I, I wish we have all the time, but wisdom is actually the application of knowledge, correct application of knowledge, which is why those of you who are students study hard, because it is the knowledge you have that you will apply for your benefit. People who have dominion live debt free. They do everything possible not to borrow. They cut their coat according to the cloth they have. They don't go beyond they are means to acquire anything. Why? Because the borrower is the slave of the lender. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. 
Proverbs 22, verse 7. Don't borrow. Because once you borrow, you become a slave to the one you borrow from. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Romans 13, verse 8 says, You should owe no man anything except love. Don't borrow. It's a terrible thing. People who have dominion, they don't owe anybody anything. Where I come from, when one big man is trying to make a young guy to a small man, he will look at him and say, Oh <laughs> God, we know you have money, but you are not the one feeding me. That's another way of saying, you have no dominion over me. I don't owe you anything. Let that idea come deep into you. Don't borrow. Those who have dominion are always diligent people. You will not find a, 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 a lazy man, like one of my children said, who will ever become diligent. Proverbs chapter 12. Amen. The Lord said there's someone here tonight. He asked me to tell you to write it down. Because one day you will break a world record. <laughs> Proverbs 12, 24 says clearly, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Hard-working people. And because of those of you who are students who are here, let me remind you once again a story I've told a couple of times. There was a time that all the Christian students in a particular university were always failing exams. And then one day when I visited them and, the, and we started discussing, they told me um, we spent quality time worshiping, praising God. I said, in examination time? Eh, but it is written, the Holy Spirit, the, well, the Holy Spirit is supposed to help us pass. I said, what is written is that the Holy Spirit will remind you of what you have learned. What is the role of the Holy Spirit? I said, well, it's a comforter. If you fail, he will comfort you. And tell you, don't worry, where there's life, there is hope. You must study. You must work hard. And then, the Holy Spirit will remind you when the examination time comes. But let me hurry, because like I said, we still have a lot to do. I want to add something that I'm not quite sure any of my children mentioned. And that is, how do I retain dominion? After I've become the one in charge, how do I remain the one in charge? Number one. You must have self-control. Self-control. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. Proverbs 16, verse 32 says, He that is slow to anger is greater than the mighty. He that rules his spirit, that controls himself, is greater than he that has captured a city, have self-control. For example, oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 
Oh Lord, thank you, Father. You know, there was one testimony here tonight that uh, almost brought tears to my eyes. I think it was the last testimony. When the sister was talking about certain things that have been taken out of the body and some amendments that have been done that are permanent and when my heart was crying to God that there might be some people in the same category who have suffered some apparently reversible uh, situations and my daddy just said something he says I should tell someone that there is no science to change ashes back to firewood he said but I should tell that fellow I will give you beauty for ashes I will be waiting for the testimony. Oh, thank you, my father. The one who already has dominion must also have self-control. And one of the major things you must control is your anger. Anger can destroy your dominion. You know the story of Moses very well. Numbers 20 from verse 1 to 12. Numbers 20 from verse 1 to 12. Here was a man who was a very great leader. So great to date is recognized in three religions. Judaism, Christianity and Islam, where they call him Anabi Musa. But in Numbers chapter 20, from verse 1 to 12, his anger got the better of him. He labored for 40 years and didn't make it to the promised land. I pray for every one of you who have problems with anger that today, this very day, the Almighty God will pull it out of you. You must learn to control your anger. You must learn to control your loss, loss of the flesh. Because he can rob you of dominion. Take example of Samson. You read Judges chapter 16 from verse 1 to the end. Judges 16 from verse 1 to the end. You know what happened to Samson. When you talk of a man who was dominant, who had dominion, a man who could subdue enemies, <laughs> you don't have to look far before you find Samson. But because he couldn't control his appetite for strange women, he died before his age, yeah, before his time. Control your loss. It can, it can lead to some very serious consequences. That's why the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, you must flee youthful loss. In 1 John chapter 2, from verse 15 to 17, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, the Bible says, Hey, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. 
Because if you love the world, the, the love of the Father is not in you. And all those things that might be beckoning to you, all the things in the world, all the loss of the flesh, all the loss of the eyes, all the pride of life, they don't last. They will perish with the world. If you want to retain dominion, you must run from the loss of the flesh. You want to retain your dominion, your obedience to God must be complete. When you consider King Saul, in 1 Samuel chapter 15, from verse 1 to 31, 1 Samuel 15 from verse 1 to 31, you find a king He was already a king. He had dominion. But he wouldn't obey God fully. That's why he lost his kingdom. Your obedience to God must be complete. And then like one of my children or two of them kept saying, you want to retain your dominion, you must remain totally connected to God. You cannot be one leg in the world, one leg in Jesus Christ, and retain dominion. The Almighty God is never interested in lukewarmness. It's either you are in or you are out. And like one of my children mentioned, you must be connected to the one who is the most high. Psalm 91 verse 1. Psalm 91 verse 1. You must be connected to the one who is higher than the highest. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 8. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 8. You must be connected to the one who is seated above principalities and powers. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 to 22. To remain forever in dominion. Remain connected to him. And you forever have dominion. If you get detached from him, you will lose your dominion. I will tell you one story and I will close my own sermon so we can do a couple of things that we want to do. I've told you the story of a brother called Brother Sam, at least the older ones among us we remember him. He was half educated. He couldn't speak English. And then he became born again and became filled with the Holy Spirit. He was on fire for God. And all manners of miracles were happening through him all manners. One day they invited him to a teacher training college to come and preach. He said, well, when I get there, I will tell them I can't speak English, so you have to get me an interpreter. But I see they call him forward and he got there and he opened his mouth to say, I can't speak English. Suddenly, beautiful English began to flow out of his mouth. He himself didn't even know what he was saying. All he noticed was that after one hour, people were rushing forward, weeping to surrender their life to Jesus. I mean, this boy, at least we, we can count at least three people that he raised from the dead. Oh, there was a time the, his mother happened to be a leader among the occultists. And one day when the mother was not around, 
he burnt everything that the mother used for occultism. And the mother decided, it's better I kill this boy. And uh, the mother left home to go and tell the uh, members of the occultic society to send something to come and deal with this boy. He has shut the door at night, he was about to sleep, he knelt down, about to pray, when all of a sudden, through the locked door, a huge black dog came. I mean, without opening the door, coming towards Brother Sam. And Brother Sam shouted, Jesus! And something like a thunderbolt from heaven hit that dog and the dog died on the spot when the mother came the following morning brother Sam was burning the dog but then brother Sam became proud let's go for Bible study brother Sam will say who is going to teach oh brother so and so will be teaching how many people has he raised from the dead It's a very sad story. The brother Sam ended up in a lunatic asylum because God left him. I pray for all of you who are listening to me. The Almighty God will never leave you. For you to have dominion, You have to be connected to the one who controls all things, the one who is highest than all. When you know that as a child of God, you are already given authority over forces of darkness, you are already seated in the heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ, etc., etc., it is compulsory for you to maintain that contact. As long as a piece of iron, of electric iron, is connected to the source, the iron will keep on hot. You pull it from the socket, it will become cold. So please take note of that. If you feel that you've already arrived, there's nobody like you. You can perform miracles, signs, and wonders, and you slow down, and you get detached from the most high. You will soon discover that you are ordinary flesh. I pray for every one of us once again in the name that's above every other name, that thing that would draw you away from God will never happen to you. <laughs> but then what about those of us who have not even been connected to him? We used to sing in those days that all those who have been saved shout hallelujah. And we say we trample on Satan, we trample on witches, we trample on wizards. You can only trample on Satan if Jesus is dwelling in you. If he's not dwelling in you, and you say you want to face Satan, Satan will tear you to pieces. Satan is old. He's an old warrior. He destroyed a lot of so-called great men in the Bible. But when the greater one is in you, ah, then you can say, I am an overcomer. So I'm appealing to those of you who might be here, who have been pretending to be a Christian, and you are not yet really, really connected to Jesus Christ. Run forward now. Come and stand before the altar. Come and cry to Jesus Christ for salvation. 
come and cry to him to become your Lord and your Savior. Come and cry to him to come and dwell in you. And if you used to be a true Christian of fire for God, but you know that the fire is gone, you are backsliding now, praying has become difficult for you, studying the Bible is now a task, and come back to the Lord. He will restore you, and then you can continue to live in dominion. So those of you who want to give your life to Jesus, and those of you who want to be restored to him, come quickly. I'm going to count from 1 to 10. But before I say 10, make sure you're already standing in front here. And I begin to count now. One. Two. If you really mean business, you'll be running. Running to meet him. Running to surrender your life to him. Running to... To come to the one who can transform your life and give you dominion. Three. Thank you, those of you who are clapping. You are not clapping for these people, you are clapping for Jesus. You are clapping for the one who can give you dominion. Four. Six. Seven. Nine. Now that's the final countdown. Those of you who are on the way, keep coming, keep coming. You are not late yet. And those of us who are already in front, let us cry to the Almighty God and say, Please, Lord, have mercy on me. Save my soul. I want genuine salvation. I want you to forgive all my sins. I want you to come and dwell in me. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Cry to him. And the rest of us, please, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them. And pray that the one who saved our own souls will save their souls also. That the Almighty God will wash them clean from all their sins. That the Almighty God will come and dwell in them so that they will become more than conquerors also. Please pray for them for two minutes. And those of you on the way, hurry up so that you can be here before I finish praying. Because I must pray in another one minute. As you are coming, pray as you come. Pray that God will have mercy on you. Pray that he will save your soul. Pray that his blood will wash you clean. Pray that he will become your Lord and Savior. Pray that he will come and dwell in you. Cry to him now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name for your word. And I want to thank you for all these people who have decided to surrender their lives to you. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash them clean in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that as you save their souls, 
you will write their names in the book of life in Jesus' name. And come and dwell in them, Lord. Let them become true children of the living God. So that from now on, when they cry unto you, you will answer them by fire. Thank you, Almighty God. And all those who are backslidden before but are now coming back to you, please receive them and restore them so that they will never backslide again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, those of you who have given your life to Jesus, let me hear you shout hallelujah. I congratulate you because today Jesus is your Lord from now on. And uh, I want to promise you, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So if you will turn to your left, you will see somebody there lifting up a placard. Oh, okay. The counselors are already on the way. The counselors, God bless you, maybe you have to move a little faster. The counselors will help me collect certain information from you, your names, your address, and your prayer requests. And I promise you, from now on, I'll be praying for you. Congratulations. Let me hear those of you in front shout, Hallelujah. God bless you. Now, while the counselors are attending to the people, and the choir will worship God for some moment. And by the way, the choir, as usual, did a great work tonight. And let's give the Lord a big round of applause for them. And uh, we wait till the counselors are finished with the new converts. And then we will go ahead. We will have number one. We will pray, even if it's only for a while. And then the uh, pastors are going to be laying hands on you. That's number two. Then number three, our graduates from Redeemers University are worshiping with us tonight. And we are not going to send them out like other graduates. We will send them out, send them out anointed so that the power of the Almighty God will go with them wherever they go. So these are the things we need to do We'll do quite a few of them simultaneously so that we'll be on our way very soon. Over to you, choir.
Thank you very much. Now, maybe we'll quickly write down our prayer points. Number one, we want to thank the Almighty God. Um, you want to have dominion, you must learn to praise God violently. You must learn to praise God like David did with all his might. And then number two, you're going to cry to the Almighty God and say, even as you have decreed it, Father, even as you have decreed it, let me remain forever blessed. Let me remain forever blessed. Number three, Father, let me remain forever fruitful, forever fruitful. Number four, Father, please enlarge my course rapidly. Let me multiply. Enlarge my course rapidly. Let me multiply. Number five, Father, give me dominion in every facet of life. Give me dominion in every facet of life, physically, materially, mentally, emotionally, maritally, spiritually. Give me dominion in every facet of life. Number six, Father, let me remain in you and with you far above principalities and powers forever. Let me remain in you and with you far above principalities and powers forever. And then number seven, your own private requests. The altar is open. We will cry to the Almighty God, even if it's for only 15 minutes, but let's make it intense. Cry to Him. Like somebody said, for someone, this might be coronation night. God will hear you and will answer you and your dominion will begin.
Let's go ahead and talk to the Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God will grant your request. Even as he has decreed it, remain blessed. Remain fruitful. Be multiplied. Yeah. Have dominion. Yeah. Physically, have dominion. Yeah. Materially, have dominion. Yeah. Maritally, have dominion. Yeah. Emotionally, have dominion. Yeah. Mentally have dominion. Spiritually have dominion. Far above principalities and powers. Remain forever. Oh Father, I request I request specially tonight for every one of your children give us beauty for ashes reverse the irreversible Put science to shame. Show that you are the Almighty. And whatever may be the private request of your children, grant tonight. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Father Almighty, we want to thank you once again for everything you've done tonight. We trust you that any minute spent in your presence is not wasted. We believe very, very firmly that as a result of tonight's meeting, there will be dramatic changes in all our lives for the better. <laughs> Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, please receive the thanksgiving of your children. Bless it. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. And from now on, my Father and my God, I pray that your children will dominate financially. That they will never lack. They will never borrow. 
they will always have more than sufficient. And everything they need to do your work, everything they need to serve you, you will give to them abundantly. And I pray that this month in particular will be a very successful month for them. Thank you, Almighty God. If there's anyone here who is still in need of one miracle or the other before the sun rises, let the request become testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Right, let somebody shout hallelujah.